What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Black Ink Crew Chicago. This is season six, episode 16, The Shutdown, which is the season finale, which makes sense. Um, so we get into the episode. This episode really wasn't much. That's why I'm not even recording on my um, regular uh, camera. I'm, I'm on my phone right now. <laughs> uh, because the review is really not going to be that long. Um, basically, what's going on, we pick up where we left off with Charmaine, okay? Charmaine and Neek, they're on their way to the hospital um, trying to get everything situated because her water broke. She's ready to give birth, unless we thought. That's what we thought, okay? You know, the, the body can be a set-off, okay? That's the warning, you know, all those contractions and stuff like that. You know, the woman's body has to get to, the service has to open up to at least 10 centimeters so that they can go ahead and start the pushing game or whatever, and that can take a while. And that basically showed us what that is throughout this whole episode we've been waiting for Charmaine to be able to give birth and she was at the hospital for multiple days before she actually was able to give birth okay um she get there with Neek and um um they had to wear masks okay and you know she was a little shocked by that and I was like well it's in a hospital so in a hospital setting I wouldn't be surprised but this is during a time where the coronavirus is really picking up and no nobody know much about it we were dead in its infancy and didn't know barely how do people contract it, how does it spread and stuff like that. So, you know, hospitals especially were taking precautions. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, she gets up there, you know, she's in a little bit of pain or whatever. Um, she winds up getting the epidural. And of course, that epidural did knock that pain out for the moment. She's feeling good. She's high off life right about now. Okay. She said she done went to sleep, woke up the next day, and she's still pregnant. Okay. And so she calls Danielle, FaceTimes her cousin, and, you know, was telling her what was going on and how I want you to come down here and to be here in the hospital, get ready or whatever. Uh, I want you to meet baby Nola when she comes. And then later on in the episode, we see that she was actually ready, beginning, about to be ready to push. She was went from four centimeters to nine centimeters. She had one more centimeter to go. And at the end of the episode with Charmaine, and how the episode really closed out was with her giving birth to baby Nola. And that was a beautiful thing. So, you know, in the midst of all the hoopla and the rigmarole of what's going on and nobody being sure about the future and the uncertainties of what this virus is bringing, you know, we got a beautiful thing with the baby being born. So that's always a good thing to me. Um, meanwhile, we got Don for and... Um, What's his name? Ryan. They get ready to go to the gym. You know, got their sanitary uh, napkins and the, the spray, disinfectant spray and everything. And they still, you know, trying to keep things going as usual. And what I do like about this particular episode is it's giving into, not giving into, but showing the concern that a lot of small businesses have had during this time with this virus or whatever when it comes to trying to shut down it's not just that they may lose money for themselves but they also have to think about their employees that are there and what's going to happen to them and that was one of ryan's main concern you know and so he dealing with that you know still trying to go ahead and make sure everything is cool you know and when everything starts to shut down he gets on the phone <laughs> He gets on the phone and, um, you know, FaceTime and Rachel, and they talking about how the kids going to be because at this time, the kids, before the city completely shut down, the school shut down before we shut down, you know what I'm saying? And so the kids was probably out for a good two weeks before everything else went completely, you know, non-essential workers, non-essential, um, you know, businesses closed down. So the kids was out for like two, three weeks already. And so they trying to figure out what they going to do with them. Uh, if they going to have to start school, you know, if they start their new grades, um, homeschooling, or if they going to be able to go back to the classroom. And then Ryan said, basically, he built up the balls to ask us to listen. I think that we should quarantine together because it don't make sense to have, you know, um, you know, have the boys spend one week with you and then come spend one week with me and then come spend one week with you and keep on doing it that way. Rachel said, no, <laughs> we're not about to do that. Okay. We don't have nothing going on between us. So you're going to stay over there. Um, and I'm going to stay over here. That's basically it. And I said, you know what, Ryan, I get what you're saying, 
But you know what was going to happen if y'all quarantined together. If y'all did not already figure that out to quarantine together. Y'all going to wind up having sex, okay? That's what it's going to do. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody else there. You know, you ain't going out looking for no poon. She ain't going out looking for no ding. And um, y'all two got that little history with each other. And next thing you know, y'all going to be slapping skins. That's what it's going to happen, okay? The kids going to be sleeping in the room next door. And y'all going to be tearing that stuff up in the um room after that. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, Rachel said I ain't trying to go down that road no more, okay? No, we need a break from that. Um, Same thing with Don. Don had his issue with Ashley, and we seen last week when um, they were going through that whole situation about her wanting to take the kids down there to Texas and, you know, all of that. And now her mind has changed on that since everything is ramping up about this virus or whatever. And so basically what they came to the conclusion is they're going to work stuff out for the most part. And I don't know if it's talking about their relationship, but they're going to quarantine together. It makes more sense for them to quarantine together. And so we saw at the end, the whole family was together, finna eat popcorn, watch movies and all that stuff. Nine out of 10, Don and Ashley not getting a divorce, okay? And if they are, it's gonna be put on hold and they still probably messing around with each other. I mean, they married and what this, this quarantine probably will give them time to work whatever it is that they need to work out and actually sit down and have a conversation with one another. So maybe this quarantine probably worked good in their favor. I don't know, you know, give them another chance. Okay. Um, Kitty at the shop, when we first see Kitty, Kitty and Jess actually on good terms, which I'm glad to see for the most part. Um, because at this point, there's no reason to be going back and forth at each other. We are in the middle of a pandemic. So let's just put all of that stuff to the side and let's just come together and try to figure out what we need to do for the betterment of the shop, for the betterment of the workers and stuff like that. And they're on FaceTime with each other trying to figure out what's going on. Because like I said, this virus stuff was in its infancy. No, nobody knew what was going on and it was catching everybody off guard. So they don't and with Second City, they just now opening back up, coming out of the ashes of negative press and stuff like that, getting new artists that's actually good at tattooing, you know, and um, the shop was starting to do good, and now they're at risk of shutting down. And so later we see um, Kitty said that she wasn't telling Charmaine everything that was going on, but, you know, she was trying to keep stuff up. And um, Steven, that's his name, uh, Jess' friend, calls her, FaceTimes her just to try to, you know, feel things out with him, uh, with uh, Kitty because, you know, he likes Kitty. And, you know, at one point was talking about saying, hey, if this um, pandemic stuff wasn't going on, you could have showed me around Chicago and all this stuff. She was like, listen, I'm not from Chicago, but I mean, whatever. So basically, he was flirting. They flirting with each other. He got a thing for Kitty. He called just to see if Kitty really was going to miss him because him and Jess have decided to go back to London, you know, to wait out the pandemic there, which is understandable. Okay. And it was kind of messed up with Steven because <clears throat> Jess called Steven out here to work and he hadn't even been able to work yet before everything got shut down, you know? So it was a waste of a trip to be quite honest, but I guess for him, it really wasn't that much of a waste because he got to meet Kitty, you know, and he got a little thing for Kitty. So he got something to look forward to when he comes back, if he comes back to the States, you know, so that was that. Um, the one thing that I didn't really like, but I'm pretty sure Charmaine probably would understand is the fact that Jess did not tell Charmaine that, you know, she was going to leave and go back to London. But, you know, Jess reasoning is, you know, she's going through a whole lot. She's about to give birth and she didn't want to burden her with anything else. I understand that, but you still could have shot her a text or whatever. I hope she did because we don't need any more miscommunications and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure Charmaine understood that and probably would have been like, okay, girl, cool. That's understandable. You know, go ahead and be with your family. Ain't no reason. If we're not open, there's no reason for you to be trapped over here when all your people is over there. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully they figure that out and that's not a big issue you know what i'm saying i don't want no more drama between them it was enough drea 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 went to go get her um nails done okay right before the pandemic i wasn't even mad before they shut us down i wasn't even mad at drea for that because drea was me the day they shut us down i went to go get my hair done <laughs> 
<laughs> I went to the shop to go get my hair done, okay? Baby, I, I and it needed it. It needed it. And the next day, everything was shut the fuck down, okay? So, I was not I was not mad at Drea. You know, she had to go get that nail fixed or whatever. You know, they had the precautions, you know, the um, uh, temperatures and stuff, thermometers and whatever. And, um... Is it me like this stuff got me so paranoid? I be taking my temperature each and every day. Even if when I feel like I have a headache or whatever, especially I be like, oop, let me go take my temperature. Like, okay, girl, it's just a regular headache. You know, your temperature is stable. You know, cool. I be looking up. So the temperature, body temperature is supposed to be, listen, listen, this virus stuff, all this stuff has had my nerves and my anxiety on 10. All right. So that's what I've been doing. What y'all been doing. Um, trying to get through this stuff to ease your mind or whatever. But anyway, you know, we got that going on. Um, what else wound up happening in this episode? Bella went to the store to see, trying to stock up on stuff. And we just seeing how everything is just, you know, taken out and the shelves are empty. And, you know, when everybody went on that rush, was trying to get all the toilet paper. And, and you know, till this day, put down in the comments. Do you got Lysol spray? We are just not trying to able to get Clorox um, bleach uh, uh, wipes just now, okay? Just now, months later. I still ain't been able to get no spray. Still ain't been able to get no spray, okay? And we ain't even got none at work. But we got a whole bunch of disinfectant, um, you know, wipes at work, the industrial grade. But, you know, I ain't never had no spray this whole time. Girl, it was a mess. Um, Anyway... What else been going on in this episode? But, yeah, they was just showing that the city just shut down. And the episode ends with, you know, um, Nine Mag just closing the sh their doors and, you know, um, sending everyone home. At first, we see them showing that they were still open at one point, you know, showing them disinfecting everything and telling everybody that they have to wear masks if they're going to be up in there. But other than that, they just had to close their doors. And, you know, they was just showing how... The city of Chicago was literally a dust, um, deserted. That's what it looked like. Um, but that's what we had to go through. That's what many cities had to go through across the country. So, you know, you guys tell me how you felt about this episode. Tell me how you felt about this finale. It wasn't really much, but they did what they could with what they had. Uh, it was a cute little ending. Congratulations to Charmaine again and Neek. And um, you guys tell me how you felt. And I want you guys to continue to be safe out there, all right? And I will see you guys later. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments and we shall discuss. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Greenleaf, okay? Peace.